Chronicles of a European Winter, first episode, Athens, December 2011. The first impression from Athens, a 30 kilometers bus ride from the airport to the center. Looking through the bus window, there is just one hint telling that something is not completely normal here. There is not a single suburban commercial area, not a single shopping street without a few or many closed shops. During the whole ride, empty store windows appear endlessly, each with a big for rent or for sale sticker on it. It is the only physical presence of a crisis, otherwise only floating in the air, for a newcomer with no idea of how Greece was before. A few days later, near Ermou, Athens' main shopping street. We, we need a lot of time to explain you, but because I am here 40 years, this situation I don't remember before. Look, this is the, the most commercial road of the city, of the center of the city. You see, one, two, three, four, closed. Lambros owns a small women's clothing shop. He spontaneously starts speaking with me as I pass by. <laughs> Our payments has a lot of delays. You understand me? A lot of delays. Everything is uh, blow up here. And uh, I don't see solution for the future. What happened in the future? Today, we have a name day of, of Saint Nicholas. And last year, a lot of people coming here for buying. Now, nothing. Nothing. How is it uh, personally going with your shop? Are you, do you have big problems? Do you think it's going maybe to stop? Or what's, no. What's your situation? No, no, I'm a fighter. No, I'm a fighter. I fight. I like to fight until the end. No, I'm not going to close my store, but I fight for that. No, I feel myself to be a captain in a ship. It's a personal business here. This lady is my wife, not this, the other lady is my wife. Come. <laughs> Last year here, for example, every day we take 1,000 euros. Uh, now, no. Five, four, three, six, hundred. So I told you before, I'm a fighter. Maybe I lose, I don't know. I don't know. End of November 2009. 
Financial circles are shaken by tremors in Dubai, which is on the verge of bankruptcy. It is the first time since the beginning of the financial crisis that the risk of a state bankruptcy has become a possibility. In Greece, Socialist Party leader George Papandreou has been Prime Minister for two months. After his election, his government realises that the state finances are in worse condition than the previous government had stated. He makes an official announcement on November 30th, 2009. One week later, the agency Fitch Ratings downgrades Greece's credit rating by one notch from A- to BBB+. We heard, we heard of this a uh, couple of years ago, but we couldn't imagine what is uh, to experience what's happening right now. There's a lot of difference. We, we couldn't understand what was uh, waiting for us. Even two years ago, for, a, for an average person here in Greece, was was nice until 2009. Yanis is 33 years old. He is an employee in a publishing house and hasn't been paid in the last three months. His colleague working in the same office is 50 years old and has the same problem. Actually, we can't imagine what will happen tomorrow. We know that it will be for bad. But what? They threat us that uh, we must pay uh, what we owe to, the, to Europe. <laughs> so they take everything from the poor, from anyone. Because uh, we see that uh, they can't reach the rich people. They can't reach them. They can't touch them. They can't, they can't do anything to them. Austerity measures. Since 2010, New legislation passed in Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and the UK has had a significant direct impact on people's living standards. These laws were voted through by different political parties, conservatives, liberals, and social democrats, introducing so-called stringency or austerity measures. These have resulted in an increase in taxes and a reduction in services provided by the state. Increased VAT, higher taxes on fuel and heating oil, an increase in income tax, social security contributions, and housing tax, to name but a few. Lower pensions, cuts in unemployment and disablement benefits, a reduction in public services in the areas of health, education, and transport, and higher costs for users of those services. If we add together the laws passed in the above countries, then a total of about a hundred such measures have been adopted in Europe over the last two years. This year, the, the recent year, uh, we, do, we don't, they don't pay us uh, <laughs> regularly. There was um, some kind of salary and this salary, first of all, uh, they reduced it a lot, 10 months ago. And now we are three months without payment. We have for three months, we're working free now. Yes. For instance, uh, our, our boss, our boss ha had uh, three companies three years ago with uh, 37 persons, personnel, 37 people, personnel. Now we are three and one company. So it's madness. Uh, I don't buy anything anymore. And uh, I mean it, anything. And uh, I only save money for, for food and uh, for the main taxes. The main taxes. All the other taxes, <laughs> I leave them be. Every three or four months I hear of some great friends of mine uh, losing his job. People who were uh, exedicavmeni, how are Specialized. Specialized in uh, certain jobs, uh, very well paid jobs, and now are unemployed. Very difficult. 
very different. Some of them uh, <laughs> have families now, <laughs> have babies, <laughs> and uh, they, they don't know what to do now. I think uh, some people are uh, already thinking of uh, going back to their roots and uh, <laughs> suburbs or out of Athens, you know, in their villages. <laughs> and uh, a lot of friends of mine, uh, they went abroad already. And a friend of mine too. Yeah. And uh, we are talking about lots of them. Uh, Germany, England, uh, USA, Cyprus. Australia. Australia. Bra Brussels, Belgium. Yes. I know people even going to Bulgaria and countries like this. Yes. Yeah. Your, your mood, how are you doing in all this? Do you already <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> Psychologically, <laughs> we are very down. In every aspect of our lives. Uh, there is a difference in uh, in saying uh, that uh, Greeks should uh, live with less than Greeks should live with nothing. Uh, there is a difference. We're going for nothing. We can see it accelerating. It's like uh, like an avalanche, and uh, we see the avalanche <laughs> that it's going to take us away, all of us. It's a question of survival and not a question of, um, of wealth and um, having a nice time. We are in a kind of war. It is a different war without bullets but with victims uh, of another kind. And victims that are not uh, make front cover, front pages in the newspapers. But it seems that when you see uh, people starving uh, and searching in the um, garbage cans, the garbage cans to find uh, food or things to sell, it's not a good situation. That we are not accustomed to see these things uh, here in Greece. Yesterday, Kathimerini newspaper had a story about a little girl that was uh, left in the kindergarten with a note in her pocket from her mother, sorry, I cannot feed her, I will not come to take uh, her home. February 2010. Lenders are increasingly worried about Greece's debt. Fearing it won't be repaid, they ask for higher interest rates, which increases the debt amount and worsens the problem. The government must act before it is too late and announces that austerity measures will be introduced. These consist of raising taxes and reducing government spending to balance the budget. The first measures, proposed on the 9th of February 2010, are cuts on civil servants' salaries. Famous economists and Nobel Prize winners Joseph Stiglitz and Paul Krugman criticise those methods. Such policies can only be adopted in a time of strong economic growth and would be inefficient and even dangerous within the context of a crisis. Everyone has an opinion now. At least not uh, to feel guilty that they did nothing. Most of us, we didn't care. Me, myself, I was never involved in politics. Never. And perhaps that was our mistake. Yes. Before leaving work, 
Yanis's colleague asked us if he could add something to the discussion. Well, my situation is not as bad as is other people because my wife has a, a good job. Um, however, e e even if I say that I'm not uh, in a very bad position, we have to sell a car. Uh, we took our children from the private school they were going. We don't plan anything for Christmas. And of course, I feel very bad that they cannot contribute to the house's expenses. From September till now, uh, I contributed with 400 euros. It's nothing, as you know. It's less than the supermarket of the month. I cannot uh, escape Greece because um, my children go to a Greek school. My wife works here. It's very, very difficult to go to start a new life uh, abroad. Both my wife and I are around 50. It's difficult now. Yanis is younger, so he, he can go. But uh, no, there are no secret plans. Uh, uh, the only plan B is to to go to a smaller house, but I don't, I don't uh, like even to think about it. We have to try to, to keep a standard in our life, just not to, to become crazy. Just, just to, to, to keep a balance inside. inside. Well, that's all. That's my sad story. <laughs> A normal small supermarket in a calm middle-class suburb. I just wanted to buy a few simple things. Two liters of milk, half a kilogram of yogurt, six eggs, half a kilogram of toast bread, and 200 grams of feta cheese. Buying the cheapest low-cost products that I could find, it cost me 8 euro 55. In France, I would have paid 6 euro 50 for the same, and in Germany, only 4 euro 73. Generally, as a person, I was always, let's say, an optimist. I try to be an optimist, but I know that this is an illusion. Mikolaos is 30 years old and works as an engineer. For the moment, everything is still fine, but it doesn't mean that the crisis doesn't affect him. I really feel very bad when I see some stuff, like people sleeping in the street. When I see, for example, have you seen this? Uh, it's not a car, not a motorbike, something in the middle. They have it in Asia, they have it in South Italy, they had it in Spain, but some years ago. Now you can see them again in the street. So. Uh, in some occasions, it's a time machine. You see things that uh, did not happen the, 20, the last 20 years. I, I feel bad for that. I really feel bad. And you know, even if you try to be in a good mood, when you see this stuff, you cannot be in a good mood. If you see shops closed, you cannot be in a good mood all the time. Okay, you try not to think of, of that. Yeah, let's say uh, two weeks ago I was in Belgium. I wanted to see how is the situation there because for my boss tells me, Michalis, get out of Greece. Greece is collapsing. You are in a ship that is sinking. And he says, I have five houses in Greece. I have a very good pension and I have money. 
but I'm sending my son to America because I believe there is no future, future in Greece. So you should do the same. I'm your boss and I want you in the company. But I'm also your friend, so take a look. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's say my salary, luckily, is not decreasing. I work as an electrical engineer for a company that is um, dealing with uh, industrial automation. But I know, I know people that they lost 50% of their salary in one year. The problem actually is that there were a lot of people two years ago that they took loans to buy a house or to buy a car. Because two years ago, the government told us, go and buy a new car and we'll give you a discount if you give us the old car, like a 20% discount. So a lot of people went and bought and uh, went to buy new cars. And these people really, really have problems. Because if they sell the car, they will get only one third of the price of the car they have paid. The same with the houses. They are doomed somehow. And the last years, the prices of uh, uh, gasoline became double the last two years. The price of the cigarettes became double. The price of alcohol became double. The tickets of the, uh, of the metro are 40% more expensive. Everything became more expensive. The heating became double. I mean, the, the, the petrol you are going to buy for the house. Uh, the electricity, 20% higher. Uh, it's very hard for some people. I know it. The impact of austerity measures. The consequences are immediately apparent. Higher taxes and lower social benefits have led to a reduction in people's purchasing power, while fewer public services means that citizens have to pay more for health, education, and transport. The result is a sharp decline in living standards for the majority of people. Furthermore, the decrease in purchasing power leads to a lower level of average consumption and hence a lower level of growth. Shops, offices, and factories are closing down, generating more unemployment. But if these measures are having such disastrous consequences for ordinary people, why have so many governments chosen to implement these policies for the last two years? I think Everybody has changed his life. Small changes, big changes. Yeah, I know people that do not go out. I mean, you tell them, let's go out, and they always find an excuse like, I'm tired, I'm sick, uh, I have a toothache, etc. And I know I stopped calling them afterwards because I know they were fired and they don't have money to go out with you, so they try to find an excuse. And this is bad because you don't only lose, let's say, the money, but you lose the communication with other people. The problem is there are also Greeks who do not have money to pay the rent. Uh, my friend uh, told me that the woman who was living one floor to the next floor, she ordered some technicians to remove the heating system from the house because she does not have money to pay for the heating. And because it was central heating, it was the only way to avoid paying the, heter- the, the central heating. Uh, this is sad. I, I know people that have not moved their car for, let's say, six months. Because they don't have the money to pay for the insurance. like, uh, okay, maybe I will be next. So let's try to behave in a better way because maybe in three months I will also be unemployed. So somehow the crisis brought us a bit more together. Uh, I remember also 12 years ago when we had the big earthquakes 
they brought us together too. But I would prefer not to have earthquakes or not to have the crisis and to be to get more together in another way. It is like an earthquake. It is like an earthquake. But you know, because I was here, Manos, you were also here in the big earthquake of 99. Somehow the whole earth trembles. You see buildings shaking, etc. And you cannot go anywhere. This is like the crisis. You see your world trembling and you don't know what to do. Uh, start running, like to go to another country or stay in the house that you are more safe. So you really don't know what to do. But always with earthquake, you know that it's going to be an end. I don't know when the end of the crisis will come to Greece. I, I hope soon. Because it's a, it's a great pity uh, to see your friends and also yourself uh, without a hope. I'm, I met, for example, old people, because I always like to talk with old people. And they were telling me, I was here in Piraeus in the Second World War. And we had the Germans and the Italians uh, bombing, etc. In the end of the tunnel, let's say, there was a light, there was a hope. Now, I don't see any hope. This is what they are telling me. How, how can something better come? I, I don't know. started gradually, you could see it, but you wouldn't believe that yeah. anything was going to go wrong. I mean, even up until a year ago, you wouldn't believe it. People would say to you, oh, we're going into a deep crisis, well, we have to pay all our debt back, and this means that the economy is going to fall into a recession. And people would just not believe it. I mean, it was just like a crying wolf. Eh? The wolf is coming, the wolf is coming so many years now, and the wolf just never came. So we're still, we're actually still yeah, in Yeah, we situation. don't want to believe it. We yeah. don't want to believe that. Even now, crisis. we're thinking, okay, it's going to go bad. Well, okay, we're just going to make it through. In the streets of Athens, the noise of shopping carts became usual after first appearing in the summer of 2011. On the streets, mostly immigrants, but also a lot of retired people, walk from garbage bin to garbage bin to collect paper, metal, or big pieces of scrap. Bangladesh. Need this with how much money? Oh, right. Twenty cent. Twenty cent for one piece. 20 cent each, 1 kilo. 1 kilo 20 cent. 1 kg? 1 kg 20 cent. Even this? Uh, 10. 10, 10 cents. Cent. 1 kilo 10 cent. Yeah. Which place do you take it? 5 kilometers. 5 kilometers. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Twenty cents for one kilogram of metal, ten cents for one kilogram of other scrap, seven cents for one kilogram of paper. One cart loaded with a hundred kilos has to be pushed on five kilometers by two people and brings about twenty euro, ten euro per person. For the poorest people, a lot of illegal small jobs disappeared in the last months and they now have to imagine new ways to survive. March 2010. The banks demand ever higher interest rates on loans to the Greek government. A second austerity plan, more severe, is adopted. These new measures include further cuts of civil servant salaries and a rise in the rates of VAT and fuel tax. With these changes, the government reduces salaries and increases the cost of living, which has a direct impact on consumer spending. All this leads to a downturn in economic activity and growth, and finally to recession and more unemployment. 
for the government. This means less revenue from income tax and higher spending on social welfare. The state ends up losing more money than it has saved. The secondary effects of austerity tend to worsen the debt problem instead of solving it. Sofia is giving guided tours in an exhibition about Yanis Metsis, a dancer and a choreographer who changed the history of Greek ballet in the 1960s. She designed this exhibition, trying to keep it alive herself, while the museum had to cut most of its support due to the crisis. Shall we talk about professional aspects? I think, I, in my case, that's the big pr- change. So I, you, I work in two fields. I am um, a freelancer in cultural events in the field of performing arts. And I also teach at the university. Uh, well, it's a kind of domino. So if someone starts not having money, it goes to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So that's what has been happening now. We see this chain of exchange having problems. We see lots of shops closing down. We see so many people losing their jobs. Everything becomes more extreme, that's a general remark. But um, right now in the universities, do you know what has happened? In the department where I, I have been teaching, we used to be 48 teachers, not all full-time, so maybe part-time because most of us were doing other jobs also. At some point, this number 48 was reduced to 38, then it was reduced to 20. This year, we will only be five. But the mon- there is no money by the state for this year, so I was told, I was asked, and I was asked to agree to teach for only one-sixth of the money that I should take. So I am supposed to go and teach for 100 euros per month and my department is out of Athens and it costs me 150 euros to travel by bus and get there. So it means that if I want to keep the connection, keep the contact with the university, I have to pay my own money to go and work. What would you do if you were at my position? Would you just go away? Then they would certainly find someone else. Maybe not with exactly the same qualifications, definitely not exactly the same person. But under such circumstances, um, younger people, especially the younger ones, would really go even to work for free, just at least to get some experience for their credits, for their CV. May 2010. The two previous austerity plans haven't worked in restoring the lender's confidence. The interest rates that are required are so high that Greece has to ask for financial help from outside the country to avoid defaulting on its debt. The International Monetary Fund, the European Commission and the European Central Bank, a trio now commonly called the Troika, agree to lend money to the Greek government. But in return, they demand an even more radical austerity and the implementation of a liberalisation programme. This harsh austerity plan is denounced fiercely. The resulting recession could be a catastrophe and could increase the debt instead of reducing it. Paul Krugman wrote on July 21st, 2010, 
I and others have watched, with amazement and horror, the emergence of a consensus in policy circles in favour of immediate fiscal austerity. On May 22, 2010, Joseph Stiglitz explains that if Europe goes down the route it is taking, there will be a disaster. We have learned since the Great Depression that austerity is not the answer. Uh, right now I am at this position where I have been applying for jobs around Europe uh, because I see no immediate future, especially for the um, active generation. I am 38 years old, but my generation is not really seeing a future. Many of my friends have very, very low salaries. Uh, many of my friends cannot survive in houses living alone, so they are looking for solutions to live with parents, which is, I think, a ridiculous solution because we are emancipated adults. And the old idea of Greek families living together, uh, I don't know, I'm not so sure if this idea can still survive today. I also have a feeling that we are becoming something similar to uh, Balkan or communist countries 50 years ago. That we are going back to the very basic needs of survival so that there is some education, there is a little bit of food, I am, have a feeling that we are becoming something like what those countries used to be. I even don't have much contact with my friends because everyone is struggling to find new solutions, especially in the professional field. So everyone is just working, working, working. In, in my age, uh, we don't have time to meet. In my, I refer to my age because most people in my age have little children. So right now uh, they are struggling for work, work, work and try to find some way with little children. I get angry, at times I get depressed, in other moments I get passionate about what I do because I want to do something against this situation. This is how I did this exhibition that we saw, which has been one of my recent works. Everyone and everything is pushing towards cancelling everything. I don't want to cancel. I want to produce, I want to show that there are some things that have a value. And so I try to do the best I can, even if I have very little means for that. So in that case, I become active. I work in the field of, of culture. And this is one of the luxuries. If you don't have food, why speaking about culture? That's what many people say. In my case, and I think that many other people believe that culture is a kind of food and it creates a kind of thinking. So I think it's necessary. And I think we shouldn't only be speaking about having money to pay bills and get food, not only. We are humans and we have different needs, not only to be fed. So that's my position in becoming active. But in general, 
and especially sometimes when I go home in the evening, I am totally empty and I am very afraid and very angry. No, I <laughs> it's um yeah, I, I I want to say that speaking with you is a kind of relief because I have been thinking and thinking about these things by myself and I often talk with friends but to to speak to someone who is slightly out of, of the situation uh, makes you think of what you want to say makes you think of what is the worst and what is the most important so it's a kind of help on a psychological well level I feel it's a kind of little uh, almost a little um, therapy you know in just saying things loud yeah sounds strange probably to you but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a nice and warm winter afternoon in the center of Athens. The crisis is not everywhere. It is a hidden beast slowly seizing the people from below, one after another. And for those who haven't been completely swallowed yet, which is still a lot of people. Fear is there. But life goes on, and the easiest way is to continue living as before, as long as possible. Chronicles of a European Winter, first episode. with the voices of Viviana Delgado and Ifeo Lua Babalola. Special thanks to Bernd Beshthold, Helen Lutz, and Juliana Hogan. Idea and production, Etienne Hogg. This radio documentary is free of use under the Creative Commons CCBY conditions. For more information about the project, or to listen to other episodes, visit our website eurowinter.wordpress.com That's E-U-R-O-W-I-N-T-E-R dot wordpress dot com January 2012